Uh, I now invite Professor Nelson Chow, Zhao Wing-san, Gaosel, Honorary Professor, University of Hong Kong, to talk about a subject of which he is passionate, Hong Kong's new generation of the poor and the needy. President Chen, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, uh, it is indeed my honor to be invited to uh, speak in this launch forum of the Leadership and Public Policy Forum uh, series. And uh, I treasure very much this chance to uh, speak to this uh, distinguished audience, uh, mainly because I, I think uh, uh, that gave me the chance to voice out the, uh, perhaps the hardship and also the difficulties of the underprivileged in our society. I, I may take a different note from the other speakers. I'm not going to tell you the successful story of Hong Kong, perhaps the dark side of our society. But anyway, I think when we look ahead uh, to the future of Hong Kong and also uh, what, is, what are the visions for our society, for our future, I think it is uh, important not to neglect the majority, I would say, in our society who are working hard to get a living, who have to face uh, numerous problems in their lives, working, in fact, more than 10 hours a day to support themselves and also their families. But this is what I'm going to perhaps uh, to tell you in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. I've been doing research on the problem of poverty for last uh, nearly 30 years. I remember that I was first commissioned by the uh, Department of Social Welfare in 1979 to conduct a research on the poor in a society, how to give them a better living under the, at that time, it's still called the Public Assistance Program. Now it's the Comprehensive Social Security Assistance Program. So since that time, I've been in fact asking three questions. First is, who are the poor in our midst? How to find them out? The second one is, why are they poor? And the third one is, what can be done to help them? so that they really see themselves as a member of our society and not just a group of people who have been put aside. But these are the questions I've been asking myself in my research. And so I'm mainly uh, this morning to speak from the angle of the common people in our society, especially those who are Perhaps you can say in the lower echelon of our society, who are not doing as prosperous as most of you sitting here. So first, before I talk about the new uh, generation of the poor and the the needy. I first would like to say some word on, since uh, the theme of this uh, forum is the visions of the city, I would like to say something. What I see as the common people, the visions of the common people for Hong Kong, for the future. First, I, I think they would look for a more 
democratic political system. And then this is the current topic today. And as I will see is that uh, they are not really, perhaps not all of them would ask for a, what we call one man, one vote sort of political system. But at least not a restricted one like we have today. With only about 250,000 people who are eligible to vote, to vote for the chief executive. At least they would like to see a more democratic political system. The other thing is, uh, I think they will support our economy to continue to grow. No one would say because of, you know, uh, they could not sometimes share in the fruits of the economy, of the prosperity. They would ask for, you know, our economic system would stay put. I think no one would take this view. They would like to see our economic system continue to grow. The other one is, I think they would support is an increase in employment opportunities. Not just concentrating a certain sector, native service sector, in the last 10 years or so, but more a more diversified economy, give them more opportunities in choice in what they are going to do. The other thing is, I would say this, the vision for this city is that a more equitable distribution of incomes and wealth. This I will talk more later on, so I will not elaborate on this. The other one is a general improvement in living standard for all. It's not just improvements for a few, but it's improvement in living standard for every class, from the upper class, middle class, and lower class people. Lastly, I will see it as a vision of our society is a more just, fair, and caring society. A community which really people care for one another and is just and fair, giving everyone a fair chance. And also they will see that it's just not leaning on the interests of the particular group of people. Uh, with that, I would like to turn on the other thing which I would like to say something on is the people who are poor and needy and in need of help who are already known to us. Uh, fortunately, just last uh, September, the Commission on Poverty issued or published a report on the situation of poverty in Hong Kong in the year 2012. And I have the figures here, but uh, I will elaborate on this. Uh, they define, as far as the Commission on Poverty is concerned, they define the poverty line. In other words, they regard people who are living below this line as poor. They define this as 50% of the medium household income. And so according to the report, it's very obvious that we have 1.5 million people who are in this, who are living under this poverty line. Uh, that's quite a huge number, right? 1.5 million people. And even after public intervention, which include uh, social security system, including the CSSA, as well as uh, the OH announced, and also the newly implemented uh, different announced for all people. Even, you know, counting all the welfare programs that we have been providing for the poor, we still have about one billion people living in poverty. That's a real situation. In other words, you can say, we have about seven million people in Hong Kong, and one in seven of them are living in poverty, according, not 
just to my own calculation, but according to the statistics given by the Commission on Poverty. I would like to point out the fact is of this number, in other words, more than one million people who are living in poverty. And I just mentioned 1.3 million people are living in poverty, and even after public intervention, still more than 1 million people were still living in poverty. And of this number, I would like to point out there are two groups that are of great concern to us. First is the children, age 0 to 17. Those living in poverty accounted for 24% or 99% after public intervention. In other words, one in five of the children in Hong Kong are living in poverty. Perhaps you cannot imagine. But that is the real fact that we have to face. When I was still with the community care fund, we look at the possibility of having those who are not receiving CSSA, but those who are still living in poor households and how to help the kids living in poverty. And so two years ago, we came up with a suggestion to give them really free lunch. <laughs> so that when they go to school, they don't have to pay for their lunch. I personally talked to some of the principals of primary schools, and some of them told me, you know, some poor kids, because they cannot afford the fees for their lunches. So they have to give all sorts of excuses. Some would say that I'm on diet. In fact, they are not fat at all. Huh? And some would say that I don't like the lunch at school. I want to go out. But in fact, they simply don't have the money from their parents to pay for the fees for their lunch. Uh, this is very sad. So as a result, we decided perhaps uh, we should give those who are already getting traveling subsidies to give them to pay to the school direct, you know, the fees for their lunches. So then they don't have to feel embarrassed, you know. And come to lunchtime, they have to go out or do something else. Uh, this is a thing that we have to face. And I hope that in the coming policy address, uh, that will be delivered, you know, in 10 days' time from now, or which time, something could be done to help the poor kids. It's not a small number. It's one in five. Yeah, take this into consideration. And of all the working population, 18 to 64, those living in poverty accounted for 14 or 10 percent after public intervention, one in 10. In other words, even those who have jobs who are getting their salaries, one in 10 of them are still living under the poverty line, poverty line defined by the Commission on Poverty. We call them the working poor. There's another group that we have to pay attention. And more important or more serious are the elderly people, those living in poverty accounted for 43% of 33% after public intervention. That is one in three. Could you imagine of those who are 65 and above in a miss, who are accounting for about one million such people, those who are age 65 above, the total number is one million. And of this number, one in three of them are living in poverty. So we have to do something. How to do it? I think we have to face, wait for the serious policy address, or uh, as some of you may know, the uh, government's commission or the commission on poverty asked me to conduct research on the future development of retirement security in Hong Kong. 
So I'm, I'm working on it. I hope that I can come up with a report sometime in the, uh, before the end, uh, middle of this year, before the end of June. And hopefully some solution can come out of this. Uh, but of course, uh, we have to get a consensus from different political parties, and it's not going to be easy. The other thing I would like to talk about, these are the people we know they are living in poverty, but I, this morning I, I want to concentrate on another group, which I will see is that, should, uh, that we should give more attention. And sometimes they are the people who have been neglected. Uh, this is the figure from the third quarter of 2012, just a few months ago. Of this number, 3466400 persons who are gainfully employed, about 3,466,000 were gainfully employed. The median income was 13,000, same as a year ago. In fact, last year, the median income has not uh, gone down. And of this number, 28% were earning 10,000 or below. Uh, these are perhaps we can call the working poor because each month they just get about $10,000 or below. But I would call another group, which I describe them as the new generation of the poor and the needy, are those who are earning between $10,000 to $20,000. They account for 1.3 million of the total number of workers. In other words, more than 30% or one third of our working force were earning between this number. A few years ago, uh, four or five years ago, I look at this number, it's only about one billion. They are earning between 10,000 to 1,000 to 20,000. But this number has increased in the last few years. Uh, a reason for this, I guess, is because we have the minimum wage in the last uh, two years ago. They pushed some of them who are earning about eight or nine thousand dollars a month to go up and come within the range of 10,000 to 20,000. That's why we have more people who are in this group of 10,000 to 20,000. I have no uh, time to elaborate on this, but I think this should cause some concern because in other words, we do not see the whole group of the working people, the incomes of the working people going up, but only those who I used to get only less than $10,000, some of them has gone up into the bracket of ten to 20000 But the ten to 20000 it seems that have not moved up at all. That is the situation that I'm concerned about. And I call this the new generation of the poor. Because 40% of them, I just mentioned, were employed, were getting earning between 10 to 20,000, what are called the new generation of the poor. An uh, important thing is that they are not entitled to any kind of welfare and public housing benefits. They are above any kind of welfare benefits, and not, they are not applying for, uh, eligible for public housing. That's why uh, Mr. Lowe this morning, Vincent just told us, you know, even if they are studying in university, because I, I, I know some of them, when they are not earning, they apply for public housing first, because they know when they come out, they may get 10,000 a month, then they are not eligible for public housing. Some of them have to pay income tax, but the amount is so small, the tax rebates will not help them much. So in the coming budget, even though the, uh, uh, Secretary may announce that uh, there will be some test debate, but they will not benefit from this. The majority of them are below the age of 35. Uh, that is very important. They are still young. They are on the way of setting up their families. 
and they are earning between this range, and they are not entitled to any kind of public or welfare benefits, public housing or welfare benefits. And then the other figure we can see is that the medium monthly earning, employment earnings of those aged 15 to 24 stood at 9,000 and 13,600 for those aged 25 to 34. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that I describe this as a new generation of the poor and the needy. They are earning ten to $20,000 a month. The number is about 1.3 million. They are not entitled to any kind of benefits. So they are trying to, but, but they will not have any kind of uh, prospect for themselves. So what I'm trying to say is that the problem faced by the new poor, they have to face the high rent costs or accept the ready to stay in partitioned housing. No, got the Tom Fong, huh? Some have filed for public housing when they are still studying and have no income of their own. Their incomes increase only marginally, even after they have worked for 10 years. And they could have hardly safe for the first payment of a housing mortgage. They will, not, they will find it hard to purchase a housing unit and set up their own families. Uh, these are the problems which they, they, they have to face. So I, I, I would say the question is, they, if you are looking, you know, the vision for the future for this new generation, they are not a small number, it's 1.3 billion people. They are working. They would like to ask economic development for whom? When we are talking about economic development, they will ask is that even with increase in our GDP, in fact, the evidence tells them in the last 10 years or so, our GDP has grown for about 34%. But the income has not increased that much. Some of them may just have a few percentage points increase or less than 10%. So the question they would like to ask, if you are talking about faster economic growth, but that is for whom? The next one is, we are now concerned very much about the housing development, but they would like to say housing development for whom? Is for the developers making more profits or really providing a decent apartment for them? Can they afford to, for all the new housing units which are going to be developed? Uh, that is the question they ask. The last one is political development for whom? The new poor have find they have little say on the making of public policies. Uh, this, I think, their concern. I hope that this leadership and public policy series can give some answers to this group of people. 1.3 million workers who are earning 10,000 to 20,000. Lastly, conclusion. I would like to point out that the new poor, which I described, have hardly any vision for this great city. I, guess the, I seem to be a bit pessimistic, but I hope that I'm, I think I'm telling you the truth. Because I've done a number of research and I've talked to some of these people. The other thing is that the new poor have hardly any hope for their own future, unless are the economy is more diversified. They will not have any opportunities to move up at all. They are the most discontented group in our midst. A lot of research and surveys have done those who are participating in protest demonstrations and now make up this group of people who are university or associate degree graduates who are aged under 35. They are not poor. They are not getting CSSA. They are earning ten to twenty thousand dollars a month, but they are most discontented. Which I can say, we have to change our mindset before we can talk about our vision for our city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Chow, for this uh, poignant reminder.